You know, in the gospel story, which you just heard Deacon Nate proclaim, we were told that the shepherds were keeping night watch over their flocks. And often within the scriptures, the image of night can be very frightening. For when the light of day disappears, that's when the beasts surface, the dark plague came upon the people of Israel. Um, people who hate the light surface. So night and darkness can be a frightening time. And like the shepherds, we too keep night watch. The darkness of sin, selfishness is all around us. You know, we are impacted by the darkness of war. You know, as we speak, look at the Middle East, look at Ukraine, where tens of thousands have died, innocent ones. The lives of our children in the womb and, of the, and the elderly are too often not respected or reverenced. Thousands die of starvation and disease. Individually, we have our own night watch. Some of you may be dealing with grief, the death of a loved one. Some of you may be in a marriage that's experiencing stress, challenges. Health problems may have come upon you and your family. You might have a child that's been difficult to deal with. Or you might have a parent that's difficult to deal with. You may be worrying about financial concerns, gossip, or even a job, and the list can go on. Night watch is a reality in our lives. Darkness is a reality. But the prophet Isaiah used the term darkness to describe the world in which he was living. And he said, a people that walked in darkness, those who dwelt in the land of gloom. We're talking serious darkness here, not just the transitory blues for a day or two, not the downer caused by too much snow or rain. Isaiah's listeners, they were being pummeled. They were shackled like oxen, forced to do labor, they were subject to physical abuse at the hands of others. This darkness was not just a temporary clouding of the light. The people seemed fixed within it. And we have all kept night watch, and sometimes it may seem that there's no way out. But another word, a different word, interrupts all of that. And that is the word made flesh, Jesus. Out of this darkness comes a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the, in the land of gloom, a light has shone. On our own, we do not have the light we need to navigate the darkness. When Isaiah looks around, all he saw was darkness and then a light. In the passage from Isaiah, the prophet shifts from describing the gloom of the human condition to addressing the source of light, and that is God. And what great power did God use to shatter the darkness? A vulnerable little baby boy that needed the help of its mother and father. The Gospel of Luke puts it this way, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. You know, the great Christmas hymn, which we just heard the kids sing, O Holy Night, puts it this way, Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope 
the weary world rejoices when yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. The darkness can be scattered. Jesus is our guiding light. You know, I see it time and time again in the lives of people who put their focus back on Christ in their lives. Often it might be through a time of struggle and difficulty. Yet, when they keep their eyes fixed on Christ, that doesn't envelop them, doesn't enclose on them, the darkness doesn't. Because they have the bigger vision, a vision of light, knowing that God is with them, knowing that Jesus is with them. You know, it's significant that Jesus was born in a manger, a place where food was placed to feed the animals. For Jesus is food for the world. He is the bread of life for all people. The Eucharist that Jesus calls us toward as a community of faith each Sunday feeds us so that we can be strengthened in our lives as we journey through this world. Jesus gives us nourishment himself so that we can be a people of faith, hope, and love, even in the dark and the trying times, bringing light to a world that desperately needs that light. As disciples of Jesus, as committed Catholics, as committed Christians, we know that darkness does not have the last word. The canticle of Zechariah says it well. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So if we allow Jesus, whom we gather around this evening, to lead us, to guide our feet through life on the way of peace, each one of us can be fragments of light throughout our world, scattering the darkness in the many places we live. And as we receive Christ, as we share his life and light to the world, Christ will be born again in our lives and in the lives of others.